But good evening, viewers. Uh, we thank the Lord for this another opportunity to come your way and share with you the Word of God. Um, my name is Apostle Emmanuel Adade, and um, I'm in Amsterdam, um, being hosted by Temple of God uh, Fire Ministries, and the head pastor is uh, Pastor Osa Ajeman. We're having a wonderful time, three-week program, and it's been awesome. Tonight, um, there's a message that the Lord has placed on my heart to share with you, and I believe that it's going to be a blessing to somebody. Wherever you are, whether you are driving, whether you are in your living room or in the bedroom, wherever you are, I want you to give 25 minutes of your time to the Spirit of God, because we believe that every time spent with God is an investment. Let's share a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come the way of your people. We ask that right now, as your word come, minister life to your people. Let anyone that is in a despondent situation, anyone that has been discouraged, anyone that has been sidelined, anyone that is going through tough times and tough situations beyond their capabilities, Father, give them grace. We are asking for exceptional grace tonight. And as your word come, administer help to everyone, every individual, under the sound of our voice. We thank you, Spirit of God, for healing and delivering. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, tonight, we was, there is a wonderful prophetic word that the Lord has given to me that I want to share with you. And I believe that it's going to help you a lot. And the title of my message is, Don't Get Tired. Don't Get Tired. Don't Get Tired. I believe that the reason or the cause for a failure, for defeat and disappointment, frustration and despondency in life is not lack of prayer, it's not lack of fasting, but I believe it's tiredness. Tiredness is the secret to failure, according to my knowledge and experience from God's Word. And I want us to read something from the Word of God, according to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. The Bible says that He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Now, when you contact um, the dictionary, um, there are so several meanings for tiredness. But the tiredness that I want to um, emphasize on in relation to my subject um, goes like this. It's no longer interested in something or having lost patience or interest in something. I'm not talking about tiredness in terms of needing rest or sleep, but tiredness in terms of losing the interest in something. Most of us are tired of life. There are people who dress up every morning, get up in their cars, get on the bus, get on the train, and drive distances to go and work. There are people who are living with partners in life, yet they are tired of life. And so today I believe that the word the Lord is giving us a prophetic message that will address every situation that is making you feel tired. I believe that it's become a very strong weapon in the hands of the enemy by which he defeats so many Christians. And so many people, innocent people, and people that seem to have made it in life uh, 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 still take their lives simply because of tiredness. Why would a professor take his own life? Why is the societal tendencies in society, I mean, getting so high? It's because people get tired of life. And so they get to a point that they don't feel like living anymore. And so when you get to a point where you lose interest in life, you lose interest in your own life, you lose interest in, 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 in worshiping God, you lose interest in your marriage, you lose interest in building relationship with others, that is where the enemy comes in. Now we all know about something, we know that something was... Uh, um, um, blessed with strength he had an enormous strength and yet something got defeated by a young lady called Delilah well viewers I want you to know that Delilah every, every name has a meaning and Delilah simply means something delicate something small, something fragile something got defeated he got rid of his strength simply because something got tired for me, the secret of his failure was tiredness. When something got tired, he needed a place to rest. 
Now, anytime you get tired, the first thing is to find a place of rest. Now, rest is when you get into a state of unconsciousness. And so something finds a place that he felt could give him comfort. But unfortunately, something ended, his head ended on the wrong lap. His head ended on the wrong lap. And that was the lap of Delilah. He was dealing with something delicate, something fragile. And he did not have a clue what he was dealing with. I want you to understand tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I believe there is somebody in that bedroom. There's somebody sitting in the couch. There's somebody driving. There's somebody watching me from in the diaspora. Wherever you are, who has lost confidence in him or herself because you have been going through challenges, because you've been facing a lot of challenges in your finances, in your marriage, in your business, in your spiritual life. And the enemy is trying to weigh you down. The enemy is trying to tell you to throw in the towel. But I came tonight with the word of God to let you know that don't get tired. Anytime you get tired, heaven has no work to do. The moment you get tired, you limit the, the ability and the grace of God. Because when you get tired, that is where you rest from prayer. You, 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 you just stop praying. You just stop trusting God. You just stop believing God. But beloved, the Bible says there is hope of a tree if it be cut down. That at the scent of water it will sprout again. Even if trees have hope, when they are cut down, that at the scent of water they will sprout again. The same water that is sprouted on the tree, that same water is sprouted on you as human. There is hope for you. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. And I don't know the situation you find yourself in. But I want you to understand that the message that you are going through, the message that is, going to, that is making you mad, the message that is making you lose concentration, the message that is making you look tired, they are sent or they are meant for your transformation. When you go through a mess and your mess is of age, a message is born. When you go through a mess for a long time, then I want you to understand that mess is not meant to stop your destiny. It is meant to bring a message out of your mess and that makes you a messenger. The only time you become a messenger is when you carry a message. It shouldn't be somebody's message. It should be your message. You should not be an echo in life. You should be a voice. There is something God is doing in your life and I believe that it involves transformation and the transformation is also part of the reason why you are going through these messes. Don't give up on God and don't get tired because something unique is about to happen. There is something that God has for you. There is something unique that God wants to do with your life. There is something unique that God wants to do in that marriage. They said that quitters never win and winners never quit. Don't quit. Don't quit yet. It is so, it's so soon to throw in the towel. Because God has an agenda. When all plans fail, there is a plan A. That is what I call. The plans of man can fail. The plans of your parents can fail. The plans of your boss can fail. The plans of uh, 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 your loved ones can fail. But the plans of heaven will never fail for your life. And that plan is inter. That is why he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says that he knows the thoughts that he turned towards you. He talks of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. God knows the end. He definitely knows the end. I came to tell you that don't throw in the towel. Don't give up yet on God because God is not finished with you. I know that you are exhausted in your mind. You are exhausted of ideas. You are exhausted of human help. Yes, you might have been disappointed a thousand times, several times. And you have gotten to the crossroads. You've gotten to a point where you even want to take your life. I don't know what it is that you're facing. I don't know what challenge it is. But I came to tell you, there is always a way out of every situation. And that way is always channeled through your mind. And that is why God sent me as a messenger tonight to minister life to you. Will you give God five minutes of your attention or of your time for him to speak to you and address that situation? Whatever it is. There is a way out. I don't know. You might have tried a million times and not succeeded. That is not the end of the story. There is always a way out. Tonight, I came to tell you that we looked, when we look through the Bible or when we go through the scriptures, 
there are several characters that God vindicated. They faced challenges. They went through tough times. They went through periods of difficulties. And it seemed that there wasn't any way out. But at the end of the day, God helped them. God saw them through. I want you to understand, Proverbs 10, 24 says, that he that falls in the day of adversity, his strength is small. You need to be bold. You need to be strong. And that is why, especially those of my hearers who haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is an opportunity. Because there's no way you can face the challenges of life. There's no way you can face the storms of life without inner strength. Well, it may look tough outwardly, but I believe that a man's life is what is within. It's not what is without. You have something within you. The Bible says in Second uh, First John chapter two verse twenty, He says that you have the unction given by the Holy One, and therefore you know all things. Yes, God has given you something, your inner man. That is your strength. That is where your life is. And I want to encourage you that you need to come into contact with this man. John 1, 9 says that this is the true light that lights every man that comes on earth. And that is Jesus. He is the light to the Gentiles. He is the light to this generation. And when you meet him, every darkness in your life will move away. Anytime you get tired, you seem to have come to a place where you lose, you, you've lost total control of yourself. Or you kind of have, uh, 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 get exhausted of ideas. But the word of God is full of ideas. The word of God is full of hope. The word of God is full of life. Where are you now in life? Are you at the crossroads? Have you been pushed to the wall? Have you been, I mean, I mean held at the tight corner where there seems to be no way? Where you are gasping for help and for breath? Jesus is here. The Bible says that there is a friend that stays closer than even your dress. Jesus. He is a, a friend born for adversity. He is always there for you. It happened to Joseph. Joseph went through a lot of things as an innocent young man. He was despised. He was ostracized. He was rejected, abandoned. He was hated and forsaken by his own siblings. Joseph had to go through a lot. But you know what? Joseph had a dream. I came to tell you that don't lose hope. Just keep focus. Just keep focus. Just keep focus. Focus on that dream of yours. Focus on that vision. The Bible says that though the vision tarries, it will speak eventually. It tarries. It has taken long for the manifestation, for the manifestation, the reality, the tangibility of that dream to show forth, but it will definitely speak. God it's not a man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. He has promised you and he will never fail. Tonight I want you to understand that Joseph went through a lot. But because he kept focus, he had hope and confidence in his dream. He believed that the dream he had was from God. And that because God is not a man that he should lie, he will never leave him in the middle of the way. And as you journey through this life, I want you to understand that God is... The only helper who will never leave you. Your spouse can forget about you. Your loved ones at a point in time can desert you. But Jesus will never, ever desert you. Why do you have to hold on to him? Because the Bible says, Curse is he that puts his trust in man. Man can disappoint you. Man could be there today and tomorrow he's no more. But God, will always be there for you. I want you to understand there is hope for your future. You feel like taking your life. There is a particular person I'm talking to. You feel like taking your life, but I speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost tonight that there is more to life than what you think. God has better plans for you. If you don't give up and hold on and tie the knot and look up to him, he will show up unto you now. Don't take your life. Don't let the enemy lie to you and tell you that you're almost to the end of your life. And therefore, you are tired of life. Life has nothing better to offer you. Life has more to offer you. And so, don't get tired of God. Joseph went through tough times. He went through difficulties. 
He said, Pastor, you don't know what you are talking about. I've been betrayed by my loved one. Yes, Joseph was betrayed by his siblings. He was betrayed by the very persons that he slept with. He lived in, under the same roof with the same people that he considered as loved ones or confidants. Eventually, they turned their back on him. What a painful situation. Joseph did not have anybody himself, but God was with him. Don't forget that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. He is always with you in tough times, in, 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 in beautiful times, at all times, in difficult times, in challenges. He is with you. I don't know, man of God, maybe you've been trying, working hard in ministry. You've been putting the pieces together, but things seem to be very tough. Man of God, I came encouraging you tonight. Woman of God, don't give up. It is God that has called you. He called you for a reason and for a purpose. And listen, somebody said, when you pray and God answers your prayer, it means that you have faith in God. But when you pray and the answers are not coming, it means that God has faith in you. Can God have faith in you? I'm asking you a question, my sister, my brother. Can God have faith in you? When you pray to God and the answer is not forthcoming, it doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you. God has faith in you. He said, I know Abraham. Abraham did not look to the, the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. The Bible says he did not stagger at the promise, but he was strong in faith. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. He believed God against the odds. My brother, don't give up on that dream. That dream will one day materialize. My sister, don't give up. Preacher, don't give up. I know you've tried several times and things are not working to your expectation. God is with you. He has made room. If you wait a little while, you will see that door showing up. Don't give up. The dream is a possibility. Maybe people are making ridicule out of your dream. You discuss your dream with people and they be begin to make ridicule and, and they're telling you, are you sure this dream is possible? Yes, it's possible. Tell them, I believe in my dream. If anybody, if nobody believes in your dream, believe in it yourself. And one day, the God of impossibilities will make it possible. And that door will surely open. I came to challenge you tonight. Don't give up. I said don't give up. Because God is able. He's able to walk you through. He's able to take you up there. He is faithful. Faithful is he that has promised. Who also will do it. I know when you see people getting to the top or men and women that have made it to the top their elevation was not by sudden flight but they toiled upwards whilst people were sleeping overnight they were also toiling they were working they were working extra mile they were going beyond themselves they were reaching out to that dream and god helped them god i believe is calling for the bravery and the courageous Life is not meant for the weaklings. Be strong, my sister. Be strong, my brother. Be strong, man of God. Be strong, woman of God. Be strong. Whatever the dream is. Listen, if your dream is not bigger than you, then it's not of God. And so, it doesn't matter how big that dream is. Listen, God is bigger than that dream. And if you have God in your life, that same God, will see you through. I came to tell you that very soon your breakthrough is going to come. There is always friction before penetration. I want you to understand that there is always friction before penetration. And so don't think that you're going to take it easy. You're not going to take it on a silver platter. you got to fight. 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 Paul said, I have fought the good fight. Life is about fighting. Never sit down and wait for what you want. Because life is not fair. Life will never give you what you want. Life will give you what you fight for. My sister, my brother, God has better things for you. He has greater plans for you. Better purposes. Better future. Beautiful future. Don't give up. Keep fighting. The Bible says that the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. It is the Lord's. That means before the battle even shows up, God knows what to do. He knows how to walk you through. You remember, even in Jesus' life, it got to a point where Jesus said, Father, left me alone. Let this cup 
pass by me. Jesus got to a point he almost got tired. But when he came to his senses, don't forget that he was God incarnate. He was God in human flesh. And when he came into his human flesh, he almost got tired. But when he came into himself and switched from the natural to the supernatural, he said, nevertheless, let your will. It is the will of God that matters. People of God, man of God, woman of God, it is the will of God and not the will of man. It is not the plan of man. Where men may have given you several names, they may have given you a lot of talents because they don't need that in your dream. Don't worry. You don't need to wait for any man to believe in you before you make progress. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in that dream. Let them make ridicule out of you. But one day, the same God that called you, he is faithful. He will show up. If you don't give up, because God cannot use a man or woman who is a weakling. You got to be strong. You got to be tough. He said in Proverbs 20, 10, 24, he said, he that falls in the day of adversity, his strength is small. Be strong. Be strong. It's good to praise God. It's good to pray to God. It's good to worship God. But you know what? Amidst all this, if we don't have the spiritual strength, the inner strength, the tenacity, the, 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 the aggression to pursue life, your, your blessing is ahead of you. Listen, your future is always in front of you. Your past must always be behind you. Close the chapter to the past. It doesn't matter who disappointed you. You might have been disappointed by a man, my sister. But there are several men. There are more faithful men. The Bible says that most men claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. There are still faithful men. There are still loving and caring men that are being raised by God. Would you give God another opportunity? Why do you want to take your own life, my sister? Because one man disappointed you. How many men do we have in this world? One man out of the whole lot disappointed you and you want to take your life. God did not. He did not glue your life to only one man. There are millions of opportunities if you can open your eyes wide and begin to believe in the possibilities, the power of possibilities. God is speaking to you tonight. My brother, your wife ran away from you. He took away your property. And he said that is the end of it. And you don't even want to believe in any woman. Please, don't close that chapter. Because your miracle, your blessing, could be in the hands of another woman prepared by God. And so don't close that chapter. The enemy wants you to be tired of women. Because he knows that that woman, there is another woman God is sending your way that is going to be a channel of blessing. And so he's finding every way and means to stop or to close that door. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you. He's a deceiver. He's very crafty. He's very subtle. And you always come your way and find means to stop the agenda of heaven. Listen, it doesn't matter what you go through. Heaven's plan and purposes can never be destroyed. The only thing that stops the plans of God is you yourself. Don't stop it. Because even though it looks tough, God knows how to walk you through it. Joseph was strong. They showed him. He was put in the pit. He was, he was, he was hated. He was put in the dungeon. He was sent far away from home. But he still believed in God. And he believed in the dream that his God gave him. Eventually, he rose up to become a champion. Champions are not mean men. Champions are people who go through extraordinary challenges. Extraordinary people have extraordinary challenges. What are you believing God for? Are you believing God for financial breakthrough? I'm telling you, if you are believing God for financial breakthrough, then you must be ready for financial challenges. Because without an obstacle, there is no breakthrough. So if you are believing God for financial breakthrough, ministerial breakthrough, the first thing to expect is what? Is financial challenge. When challenges don't show up, breakthroughs would not be a possibility. I want to tell you, if you are believing God for wisdom, God will give you a problem to solve. God has ways of bringing out his purpose because his ways are not our ways. Neither his thoughts are thoughts. When you feel that I'm expecting the miracle to come from the left, God might be coming from the right because his ways are not your ways. You are looking for help from a particular person, but that person might not be God's choice in that period of time. You must look up to him. 
He said, I will look up to the heavens from whence come my help. My help coming from the Lord. That is the Lord, the creator of the universe, the heavens and the earth. The Bible says that the whole world is like a drop of water in his hands. He stretches for the heavens like curtains. He is the creator of the universe. He is the great one. He has never failed before and he can never fail. I trust God with you tonight that whatever you are, whatever you are going through, I'm going to leave a scripture with you. He said, Pastor, so how, how do I come back? How do I find my reading to life? How do I come back? You can come back. The word of God is our source of strength. And let me give you this word. And we want to read something from Proverbs. I want to read something from the word of God. And I believe that your life will never be the same. Amen. Let's read something from Proverbs chapter 10, verse 29. Proverbs 10, 29. It says, The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. Will you begin to see God way, God's ways? He says, the way of the Lord is strength. You have run out of strength. But the Bible says that the way of the Lord is strength. You don't know what to do. But there are divine ways of doing it. You have run out of energy. You have run out of ideas. You are exhausted of ideas. But there is a way. The Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are ways of death. That way of yours, that your personal ways of doing things cannot help you. Will you begin to seek the ways of God? The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. It is strength. If you begin to see that there's hope and begin to look up to him, the king of hope, he will show you the way out. There is a way out of that situation. You say, Pastor, I've been going through marital challenges for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years. I believe that everything that has a beginning has an end. Everything that has a beginning has an end. My brother, my sister, that situation is just not permanent. It is temporal. Don't think that it is permanent. Because it started from somewhere. It, it must end somewhere. I want to encourage you. And I want to live with you. The Bible says, from where we read, um, in Isaiah, Chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Read from verse 29. From 29. The Bible says, He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no mind, He increases strength. Even to the youths, even the youth, sorry, shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Listen, he said, even the youth, he's talking about even those with youthful exuberance, without the word of God, without God's ways, they will still get tired. And be wary of life, and young men shall utterly fall. But verse 31, that is where my emphasis is. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Why? Because we have read from Proverbs 10, 29, that the way of the Lord is strength to the upright. And so they that wait, my definition of wait, W-A-I-T, my definition of wait, is winning again in spite of tiredness. My definition of wait, winning again in spite of tiredness. W-A-I-T, W-A-I-T, winning again in spite of tiredness. You can win again. Sister, if the enemy told you that is the end of the battle, I came to tell you that he's a liar. That is not the end of the story. There is an opportunity if you can open your eyes. Just three seconds away from you is an open door. Don't give up on yourself. Wait on the Lord. For they that wait upon him, they shall renew their strength. God shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with things like that of the eagle. That means that there is no mountain. Because the eagle is... The only bird that flies to altitudes and levels that other birds cannot. That means God is going to give you extra energy, extra stamina, extra wisdom, and extra strength to do things that you cannot do. Do you know why? 
your challenge is so persistent and so adamant, it is because God wants to increase your capacity, your spiritual capacity, your mental capacity, emotional capacity. Because God cannot trust you with much if your capacity is not increased. You are believing God for more than you can carry. He has to increase your capacity. The only way he increases your capacity is bringing you with challenges, multifaceted challenges. And that is where you get close to him to seek his ways. There is always a way out of every situation. If you are watching us from Majesty Christian TV Network, we are speaking the word of God from Amsterdam. If you want to call um, and join this segment, the number is 0203374160. 0203374160. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. We came presenting the simple word of God to you. Don't get tired, woman of God. Don't get tired, man of God. Don't get tired, husband. Don't get tired, wife. Don't get tired, student. Maybe a particular uh, lecturer has decided to trail you because you didn't compromise. But God is your help. Maybe you've tried business several times and you want, you haven't succeeded. You keep losing money. You own the bank money and they, you keep receiving bills upon bills. Pursuing to come and pay. God knows how. God knows how. If he took care of your debt, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 32, he that delivered his own son, the only begotten son for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He sacrificed the most precious thing in his life. That is the son of God Jesus. What else would he not add to you? I came to tell you today that the Lord loves you. He has better plans. Don't let the enemy deceive you because God has better plans for you. Jacob worked hard for Rahel only to be given Leah. But when he realized in the night that he has been given the wrong person, the Bible says that this man, because he knew what he wanted, do you know what you want in life? Have you defined what you want in life? Don't give up. Because that's which you have desired and ever wanted is still waiting for you. He did not get tired. He had to work for extra seven years. And eventually, he had what he wanted. You are the one I'm talking to. He said, Pastor, I've worked for 15 years. I should have been promoted. I've worked tirelessly. I've been believing God. I pay my tithe. I go to church. I do whatever I'm supposed to do. But things are rough and tough. My brother, my sister, there is no way out there. The way is through the word. And you have no way to go. Keep waiting. Because very soon, he will show up. God is always on time. He's never delayed. God is always on time. He's never delayed. God bless you. I believe that tonight, there is somebody watching me who almost threw, threw you in the towel and you are already giving up on God. But tonight, I believe the word of God is coming over to you. There is somebody you diagnosed of some dangerous diseases and you are afraid that you're going to lose your life. The healing power is touching you right now. We believe, we believe in the healing power of Christ. And it's moving through this live stream on the net. Wherever you are on that couch, whatever blood-related disease, whatever situation you find yourself in, I believe that the power of God is reaching you there. And as we send for the word of God, right now, I release God's authority through this word. And I command every shackles of the enemy on your life to be broken. Let the spirit of frustration, oppression, depression, discouragement be rebuked in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood as a covering over your life and that of your children, your family, your business, and your church. May the spirit of God rise up taller. Let all flesh be silent and the spirit of God be raised up out of his holy habitation. May the Lord be for you. May the Lord fight your battles for you. And may you know that Yeshua liveth and you never give up on you. God bless you. I love you. And I'm going to see you same time next week. And don't forget to tune in. God bless you. Amen. Oh, are you ready to praise God in a regular form? Yes. If you are ready, clap your hands to our Lord Jesus. I want to tell you that you are unstoppable. No power will stop you in Jesus' name. Amen.